this section also. So thank you very much. So uh, it's a pleasure to present the undergraduate final project of uh, <coughs> uh, Lucas Miguel. The title of this work is Bayesian Model Identification Through Harmonic Balance Method for Stereo Prediction Bolted Joints. Uh, and it's a pleasure to stay as member jury, Professor Paulo Varoto from São Paulo, uh, from the University of São Paulo, and Professor Gael Chevalier de l'Université Bourgogne Franche Comté uh, in Besançon, France. Uh, it's composed by me. Samuel from UNESP and Rafael Teloli that uh, we participate uh, of the, in the key dance uh, in the advisor uh, Lucas Miguel during this work. So first of all, uh, Lucas will present uh, a short uh, uh, lecture about this. It's about 20 minutes. And after we can open uh, some discussion because Gael has some problem with the time. We have only one hour to discuss all, all things. Okay. So Lucas, you I think you could you could start. Okay. You're seeing the presentation. You can hear yes. me. Yes. Yes. Clear. Okay. Uh, good morning for everyone in Brazil and good afternoon to Professor Gael in France. Uh, today we're going to present my undergraduate final project that is Bayesian Model Identification through Harmonic Balance Method for Stress Prediction in both the Joints. And first of all, I would like to thank all my examining committee and everyone who is watching on the streaming services. Uh, okay, let's start. Uh, okay. The outline of this presentation is uh, divided in six sections. In the first, I will give the motivations and main contributions of the work. Then I will present the Buckland model. In the third section, I will explain the harmonic balance method for general case and specifically to theoretical models. Then on the fourth, I will present the, the linear deterministic identification that you do with the harmonic balance equations. Then I will expand, uh, expand the idea of the deterministic model to an stochastic model to the bolted joint. And finally, I will finish with some final remarks. So as an introduction, uh, bolted joints plays a vital role on the industry due to its connection properties, but also are a local source of nonlinear stiffness and many dampening due to the interest effect. And this is an effect uh, that's very complex and non-smooth, and it's present here due to the fictional interaction between the components that are connected by the joints and have been neglected, neglected for years, but uh, currently have attracted some support on the literature because if you can properly model this uh, dampening effect, you can try to predict uh, how it influences on the global damping of the structure and even take advantage of it. For example, designing a device that can uh, mitigate vibration on the structures due to the bolted joints. Here I brought some examples of it, of structures with bolted joints, but you know, there's an infinite of them. Here I have a metallic structure, a jet turbine, and a fringe pipe connection with joints. And on the identification problem, we have uh, many, mo uh, many models proposed on the literature to describe the Easterizes problem, such as the Buckland model, the Dow model, and the Wolverine model. And the challenges on it is that the complexity and non smoothness make it difficult to identify model parameters or even represent the nonlinearity in alternative ways because it's hard to approximate, for example, the non smoothness by smooth functions, such as polynomials or other series approximations. And these alternative ways could help uh, on the identifying procedure, for example, as you've done, you we will do here on this work. And even identified these both joint models uh, have a lot of uncertainty associated, for example, due to the uh, variation on the tightening torque and assembling conditions, or even on the normal force distribution between the surface. And to contribute with this, this point, 
This work will propose a monetary balance approach to these theoretical systems and an alternative way to represent them. And then I will apply these equations on an identification procedure to determine this Buckland stresses model. And then I will expand this determinist model to an stochastic model for the Bayesian first time. So the Buckland model for hysteresis can be described by this differential equation here, where besides the linear classical terms, we have also a nonlinear term Z here that is described by this other differential equation that depends on the Buckland parameters listed here. And this equation is also normalized by the mass that put this notation above these terms. Uh, the basis of this work is the harmonic balance method that is based on the assumption that there is harmonic distortions when you excite a nonlinear system with a monoharmonic input. And then you can represent the sum of the contributions of each harmonic term as a Fourier series and the displacement, and also on the nonlinear restoring force. And in the case of the nonlinear restoring force, you can expand this harmonic coefficients by Fourier analysis integrals, as done here. Uh, and after you do these approximations, you also can uh, replace them on the equation of motion uh, that you're treating and balancing the harmonic terms of cosine and sine terms. You can obtain this system of two kappa plus one equations. That is the cosine terms balanced with equal to zero on the right side of the equation. The first order sine terms balanced with the input sinus, uh, the sine input of amplitude A, the remaining sine input, sine terms, and the remaining uh, constant terms here. And this system can be solved to uh, reach the amplitudes of displacement A and B for a set of parameters of the system. So what about the case of the hysteresis? The problem here is that the hysteresis is described by different regimes of motion if a non-smooth transition between them. So here we propose to a uh, previous smooth procedure to uh, split the nonlinear the hysteresis loop in different paths that is represented by smooth functions. So here we have, for example, uh, Z1, 2, 3, and 4 that are smooth intervals of the hysteresis loop. So considering these intervals, you can integrate separately the ODE of the dot Z on the equation of motion of the Buckwing that on this case, we reach these equations here of Z1, 2, 3, and 4. With these equations, you can now uh, perform a piecewise harmonic balance approach when you do uh, integrate of a mean Fourier coefficient for the nonlinear restoring force, considering the Z1, 2, 3, and 4 integrated for a quarter of period each one. And after do that, you can replace them on the equation of motion again and solve normally the system of equations with a numerical method, for example, as Newton Hobson. Um, okay, and by this way, you can calculate the amplitude of displacement, and it will use it here in a deterministic nonlinear identification procedure. For this application, we use a test bench composed by an aluminum beam in a cantilever configuration that have a bolted joint on its center. Uh, this beam is instrumented with four accelerometers and a laser vibrometer on the free end. And the data acquisition is made by an LMS uh, board. The, as we here are only interested on the first vibration mode, we considered only the signal of the laser here on the free end. And after some preliminary tests, we can see the nonlinear behavior on the filter. As you can see here on the sweep sign test, there is a shift on the resonance frequency to the left. 
as you increase the amplitude of uh, excitation. Uh, that is the softening effect, softening effect. And also there is a decrease on the am maximum amplitude of displacement. That is a nonlinear dumping effect. On the step sign, you can see also nonlinear behavior due to the jump effect that appears here many way when you consider a uh, medium amplitude of excitation. The high amplitude is not done here because it's a great displacement when you apply it and so it don't continue with the test. Uh, starting the identification procedure, we have the first step that is a linear identification through classical model analysis that we use it a random input with low excitation level to that is the less energetic input we use it to try to approximate the behavior of the bin in a linear bin on this excitation here. So we identified the linear parameters of resonance frequency and damping radio here and can see the fit of the linear model on the blue line and the experimental data on the red dots. A second step, we approximate the fundamental harmonic term with the step at sign circuit screw. So as we have the uh, amplitude and a phase uh, vectors, we can obtain the amplitudes A and B for the displacement uh, for the displacement of the bin. And these amplitudes can be compared with the one obtained by harmonic balance method of the Buckland method. So here we have an objective, objective function that we compare the cosinoid out terms of harmonic balance and experimental, the sinusoid in the sine terms of experimental and harmonic balance. And a uh, sweep sign response here is considered to, here we have the sweep sign experimental and an integrated one that's used here to take into account uh, some transient effects of the displacement as the harmonic balance only consider the steady state response. And this optimization was done with the cross entropy method that is summarized on the algorithm one. Basically, the method uses set a PDF with uh, hyperparameters, that is a mean and a variance, samples some set of parameters on this PDF F, then we evaluate this, the objective function in each set of parameters and select the percentile of the whole lowest values of the objective function the lowest because here we're interested in a uh, minimizing procedure, but it's the better parameters that for your interest, the K on the K is the lowest. Between this whole percentile, we can evaluate a mean and a variance of them and use them to update to the distribution, the PDF distribution F. So we have that the new mean and variance of the PDF is a weight beta times the whole hyperparameters plus one minus beta times the old hyperparameters. And the procedure continues until we reach a variance uh, less than sigma p here squared. Uh, so following this procedure, we can obtain these updated parameters here for the Buckwin uh, model to this bottom joint and can evaluate the deterministic results. Here, these results, we can see a time response that presents a good agreement between the red points and the blue lines of the updated model, even when you have a zoom to see better the fitting between them. Uh, on the time response, on the other hand, we have a uh, difficult to approximate the nonlinear effects of the bin here on the resonance region. As you can see, the experimental points, we have the jump effect here to the left side of the resonance region. But on the identified model, it could not capture this effect here. I think it's because we considered only the fundamental harmonic terms on the 
identification procedures, but maybe if you if we consider uh, high order harmonic terms on the harmonic balance, this region could be better approximated. On the Easter Redis loop, we can see that there is a good fit between the experimental and the updated model, and can see also the increase on the energy dissipated as we increase the amplitude of station. It is proportional to the internal area of the Easter Redis loop, as you can see here. And with these results, we go now to an isochastic nonlinear identification based on the base and parallel time. The base and parallel time is based on the base rule that answers the question, the question uh, what is the probability of the system being described by this parameter lambda, given that I know a set of responses y? So it represents the increase in not information about the response due to a set of response. So I start with a prior distribution that have uh, less information because it's, for example, as we do here, uh, based on a determinist identification of only one uh, response or assumptions of the model, such as positive values or negative values, this kind of thing. And sampling on this prior distribution, you obtain a posterior distribution of the parameters based on the maximization of the likelihood function, as do here, where in our case, we evaluate the likelihood function in, uh, based on the error between the experimental uh, amplitude of displacement and the amplitude obtained by harmonic balance method. And here we have uh, experimental variance. You can see here that maximizing the likelihood function means uh, minimization of the error between the experimental and the harmonic balance method here. But how to identify a posterior distribution for the parameters of a multivariate model? For it, we have the Markov chain Monte Carlo metropolitan Hayton algorithm that uh, generates a first accepted candidate on the center of the prior distribution that is assumed to be a norm, uh, uniform distribution. As you can see, all the parameters here is normalized between zero and one and are sampled on this way. So with this accepted candidate, we generate a new candidate Y on a normal distribution based on the previous accepted candidate and a variance sigma S squared. Then we interpolate to bring the X parameters and Y parameters to the real set of parameters lambda between a lambda max and lambda minimum, that is the limit of the uniform prior distribution. Uh, so we generate a U value in a uniform distribution and evaluate this condition here, that is the, the rate of the likelihood function of the new parameter set that is evaluated by this operator L here. By the this, uh, the likelihood function evaluated on the last accepted parameters. If this condition is satisfied, we accept the candidate Y, and else we reject repeating the uh, previous parameter here. And this procedure uh, is iterative until this T rates the TS value. Here we have two important parameters to be set. Here we have the sigma S squared variance that is selected in order to obtain an acceptance rate around 50%, and the TS that is chosen in order to obtain a convergence of the harmonic balance amplitudes, as you can see here, where we assume to obtain a convergence around 1,000 samples. And with the Markov chain algorithm, we can obtain now our uh, stochastic results. It's important to highlight here that because of the pandemic, we could not finish our experiments necessary for these results. So the results are based on uh, synthetic data, based on the first uh, data that we have before the pandemic. But in this data, we increased uh, white noise. 
to generate a synthetic data for a stochastic result here. So we have the distributions of the opa, uh, the distributions of the parameters where we have the alpha and delta. Where here the red line is the prior uniform PDF based on the deterministic results. And in black, we have the posterior distribution identified by the Markov chain Monte Carlo by WHA. For the parameters uh, gamma and zeta. And here I listed some properties of these distributions. On the prior distribution, the properties important here is the minimum and maximum that is treated as lambda minimum and lambda maximum on the Markov chain algorithm. Uh, and the posterior distribution, we have the map value and the mean value. On the, the map value in the case is the value which maximizes the likelihood function. So it's considered on the Bayesian paradigm for a time the best parameters identified. And here we have the mean of the distribution. Okay, in evaluating the results, we have a time response that again have a good fitting even on this zone in natural frequency with the confidence band of 99%, where all the red dots are harbor on the confidence band. For the hysteresis loop and the receptance, we have here, in the case of the hysteresis loop, a larger confidence band here that's associated, including because here we have two axes of uncertainty. For example, here on the displacement, we have the uncertainty only on the displacement axis. But here we have the uncertainty of the displacement and the uncertainty due to the storm force. And we have a good agreement between them. And you can see also that here on the region of the non smoothness transition between the loading and the unloading cycle, we have a more sensitive to the parameters because you can see here that the confidence bands get larger here, showing that it's a more sensitive region. Uh, on the receptance on, uh, in the frequency domain, we can see that on the resonance frequency, again, we have some difficulties to predict the behavior here. And at some points right after this maximum value of the receptance. For a medium amplitude, we have the best case that we analyze it, that is the case we use it, the data, the real data. And we have a good agreement even on the, the stress loop and the receptance curve. The worst case analyzed was on, was on high amplitude fixation. There we have here a uh, good agreement here on the stress loop, but on the receptance, we have difficult on the resonance frequency and this region right after this resonance, even with the confidence bands of 99%. So as final remarks, we have that the piecewise harmonic balance approach is useful to identify and represent analytically the response of threat systems. However, it depends on the nonlinear storm force that is uh, the the linear historic force equation and how it's represented. The point here is that even the idea of the piecewise harmonic balance is general for however uh, theoretical model that is used. It's very particular on how this nonlinear historic force is described. For example, the procedure that we've done here, integrating, was for the Buckland model, but you can uh, analyze how is the best way to split and smooth the nonlinear storm force that you are treating on the on the uh, system that you are analyzing by harmonic balance. Uh, the methodology developed to identify a stochastic buckland model to the bolted joint step bench could reproduce its dynamic behavior, including showing regions more sensitive and with more difficult in prediction as you can discuss on the infrared slope and the receptance curves. And although the methodology is fully applied and documented, it's hard to evaluate at the moment if it's capable to predict the real system uncertainty. 
of the stochastic step were performed with synthetic data, but it's uh, probably the first future work that we do, and I can go back to the laboratory, is finish with these experiments and see if I can really predict the uh, uncertainty of the system. And I do like to add to the FAPSP, SMQ, and CAPS for financial supports. And thank you for your attention. Hello, Lucas, Hello. you are finished. Sorry, I had some problem with my internet. It's okay now? Uh, no? Yes, it's okay. I think it's okay. okay. Okay, I think you, you finish it. Yes. Our open for, for questions. First of all, I also want to thank again the participation of Professor Baroto from University of São Paulo, Professor Gael Chevalier from Université de Fonte Conte. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to have your comments on our research for evaluating. Uh, I will start with Professor Gael Chevalier. I invite you to list in your remarks, your comments. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sorry, the, the okay, sorry, is not, the, the, not so good here in France. Here. So I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't idea from you, uh, Samuel. Uh, okay. Is it to to me to ask question now? Yes, you you have some you can uh, perform some questions, some comments. We're open to to our contribution about this. You you, you are free to do to do this. Okay. I think okay. Ten minutes, fifteen minutes. You you decide. Okay. Uh, okay. In feel free. Say me with Professor Varu to start to, to to talk or me. I think you're free. Well, I think we're open in the discussion now. I you prefer. I'm free for questions up to four o'clock here in France. So we have still more than half an hour. So we can begin uh, with myself okay. or Professor Varoto, as you prefer. Okay. I think you, you I can, can begin. You can. Yes, you can begin. Okay. Okay, first of all, thank you, uh, Lucas, for this uh, very nice talk. Even if I'm a bit far from you, it was uh, very nice to, to hear this talk. It was uh, very clear and very well uh, presented. Thank you for that. Thank you, Professor. Um, I, I suggest uh, to go to the slide number 12. OK. That will be my first question. OK. Uh, no, so, sorry, number 12, not number 20. Uh, number sorry, sorry, sorry. OK. Yes, uh, very simple question. I was wondering, here you, you explain you use random input with a quite uh, pretty low excitation level in order to identify the what we can call the linear parameters. Do you confirm? Yes, it's a random input. Yeah, okay. Is it, uh, uh, with, with Raphael, we were wondering during his stay in France, is it um, is it sensitive to the to the uh, uh, input level? Do you think if I don't know if you multiply the input level by ten, is it still feasible to identify the, your audio? Sorry, do you hear so, from me? Sorry, sorry. Uh, maybe I can. I'm I not can hearing the camera. It might be better. Just one minute. Okay. Do you hear better? Yes. Okay. So uh, going back to the. Okay. okay. Yes. Perfect. Uh, yes, I was wondering if the the excitation level here the the excitation is a random excitation. So we we can suppose the um, the, the the behavior is pretty linear. I I agree with that. But is yeah. it sensitive to the uh, excitation level. I mean, probably, but how much is it sensitive? Uh, yeah, I do not evaluate how much it's sensitive, but when you consider uh, high, um, higher 
amplitude level here, I see that the parameters changed considerably. So, so I do not buff evaluate how much it is the points. The, do both parameters are changing? Do both parameters change? Sorry. Uh, uh, so mainly the damping. The resonance frequency changes a little, but the damping changes more. Okay. And does the does the curve still look like a, a linear FRF or not? For the random input, yes. If I consider okay. another input, there is a nonlinear behavior here. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. My next question, uh, sorry, is on the slide 20 this time. Okay. It's the number 20. Okay, perfect. So here uh, you, okay, you plot the restoring force against the displacement, but uh, you said in the, um, in the title that these hysteretic loops have been uh, plotted for several excitation levels. And to my opinion, uh, the, the restoring force might, might also depends, might also depend on the frequency. Uh, because if yeah, I will, yeah. this is a time for video. Yeah. Uh, here, you used the sweep sign station and evaluated the iterative loop near to the resonance frequency we plotted from the sweep sign test here. And I agree with you. It depends on the frequency that I evaluate here. Here is near to the resonance frequency. Okay, so we, we can uh, we can say that this is like a, a slice of the of the response if we put it plot it sorry in the in the in the three D di diagram with the frequencies displacement and the restoring force this is a slice and you can yeah, yeah. okay okay it's uh, easier to understand for me um, and uh, I got another question. Uh, maybe about the I, I didn't um, I didn't write the the number of the slide, but going back to the um, to the harmonic balance formulation at the beginning of the of the talk. Okay. Uh, Here. I'm wondering, but um, I, I think I already asked the question to Samuel or to Raphael, but I didn't uh, I didn't remember the the answer. I was wondering if he, if it was sensitive to the order, the, the 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 whole procedure of identification is it sensitive to the order of the harmonic balance or to the Fourier uh, series? I mean, Sorry, if, the, I if the number of k is great and great, does the procedure is accurate and accurate? You understand what I mean? If you change no. the number of the order of the series, K, what you the call The number K. of components that I consider here? Yeah. Uh, okay. If I change the results, could uh, be better. But with only the fundamental harmonic terms, I have two points. That is the computational cost that increases considerably when I consider high order terms. The expressions get so much larger and complex to be uh, solved. I have more uh, numerical instability in points near to the natural frequency where I cannot reach a convergence of the method when I increase the number of components considered. And I have another point that is the consideration of obtaining these terms direct uh, from the stepped sign curve on the amplitude and phase, I can approximate directly the A and B terms if I consider only one term. If I consider more terms, I cannot do this uh, comparison directly between them. But mainly the point of the computational cost and the numerical instabilities that I reach when I consider high order terms here. Okay, what's the order for which the, 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 the procedure become instable? If I consider three or five terms, it's very instable. Do, do you have an idea of, uh, for the reason why it becomes instable? 
No, I don't have an idea. Okay. Okay, thank you for this answer. But the system, when I, uh, I use the algorithm of nonlinear uh, solving of the equations, it cannot reach a convergence anyway. Okay. Okay. Um, for my knowledge, I, I want to um, go further on maybe, uh, sorry, I, did, I didn't uh, write the number of the slide, but one of the slides where you you plot the restoring force, uh, the identified restoring force at the end of the of the talk. I, I will, for the will you stop, maybe go. Yes, for this one, for instance. Yes, perfect. Uh, it's not completely clear for me what does the um, the confident bands mean on the restoring force? Is 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 pretty clear on the receptance, but it's not very clear on the restoring force. Can, can you comment uh, each okay. part of the reason, reason, uh, restoring force? Sorry. Okay, I have calculated the restoring force using those. I used the Monte Carlo simulations and mm -hmm. integrated the equation with the the storm force with the nonlinear parameters that are depend on the distributions and sample on these distributions some sets of parameters and then I use them to calculate the uh, displacement, uh, velocity acceleration, and even the nonlinear storm force. And then okay. I calculate the uh, percentiles of 99% even on the axis of the displacement that I obtained with the 1,000 simulations, mm -hmm. I take all these 1,000 simulations, calculate uh, the 99 confidence band of on the axis of the return force and to the axis of the displacement too. I calculated okay. for the both cases. Okay, I better understand. That's that's uh, yes, I didn't understand that you you. You put also the the confidence band on the displacement. It's it's more clear, much more clear for me. Thank you. Uh, my last question is about the uh, yes, no. I, I I got two 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 other questions. The first one is um, uh, can you uh, can you tell me how difficult is it to put another model? Than, than the book one inside the procedure. If I want to use DAL or Lugre or okay. something. Okay. Uh, the, 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 how can I see? The key point here is you can, is if you can represent them in smooth intervals, integrate in some way the, or the E of the restoring force in smooth intervals. If you can split them in intervals, smooth intervals, and obtain a different equation for each one. If you can do that, you can uh, integrate these intervals that you reached in uh, fractions of the iterated loop. We tried to use the Lugri model here, but we could not split it uh, uh, in a feasible way because we obtained equations of the loading and unloading cycles for the Lugri that do not depend on all the Lugri parameters. And then we decided to use the Buckland because the equations of this path depends on all the Lugri parameters so we can identify all of them. On the case of the Lugri, there are, if I'm not wrong, about four or five parameters, and two of them are not on these equations of the intervals. So we do not use it that because we could not uh, identify all the parameters through this approach of the harmonic balance, including this, this approximation, this approximation of harmonic balance that we use it, do not use it on the identification procedure, are listed on the MSSP article mm -hmm. here. We presented the both cases of the harmonic bands, both for the Buckland or the Lugri. And there we see that there are not all the parameters 
on the harmonic balance equations. Because of that, it do not use it, it on the identification procedure. But if you can split smoothly the intervals, you can use any model that you want. Okay, okay, it's clear. Uh, and finally, I want to go to your conclusion. Okay. And um, yes, yes, perfect. Uh, yeah, I, I was wondering, uh, to be clear, uh, I, I want to know why are you um, less confident with real uh, with a real system than you are with a synthetic system? It's the third point. Why? What's the what's the specificity of a real system? For which you worry about these real systems? The question that I highlighted here is only that I do not have the uncertainty of the real system because I do not use uh, rep uh, a series of experiments of the real the real structure. I use the here data generated for only one experiment. I do not have a variability of experiments to analyze here and see if the uncertainty is uh, represented by this confidence band. It's only with data generated by white noise. But is it because of the, the PDF shape? Or is it because of the PDF values or why? What? Because in a real system, uh, here you assume a noise in your synthetic data. I mean, this noise, noise may be Gaussian noise. It's Gaussian noise. Yeah, but I think on a real system, you also you will also meet some other kind of noises, but you are able in your synthetic data to add uh, some other synthetic noise, I think. Is it true? Yes, I could try to do it. Here, you use it only the Gaussian noise here. But okay. if I know how it's the how is the the noise of the system, I think I could put this on the synthetic data. But as I okay. do not have data for it, I use the Gaussian. Okay, I understand. Okay, thank you for all the answers, and thank you, Samuel, again. So. Okay. Thank you, very Thank you very much, Professor Gael. It's, uh, it's nice to, to listen to your, your comments about, uh, about your work. Uh, now I then invite uh, Professor uh, Paulo Varotto. Thank you very much, Professor Paulo Varotto. It's a pleasure for us. And it's a pleasure also to introduce uh, Professor Gael Chevalier. I think he, he could uh, work together with several points, several comments. It's a pleasure for, for, for me to, to have you and your uh, member jury here. So, the booking. Thank you, Samuel. Good morning, folks, again. Uh, Professor Gael, it's a real pleasure to meet you, uh, despite being the fact that uh, we're meeting on, a, on an online and different way, but uh, it's still valid. I hope everybody's listening to me well. Uh, Samuel and Lucas, thank you so much for your in kind invitation. Samuel, it's always a pleasure to uh, follow your students' work, your work. You know that uh, um, I'm a big fan of your work and uh, I look forward to continue working with you and, uh, and uh, doing good research, uh, including with uh, Professor Chevalier as well. Maybe Professor Chevalier will, will like to know, would like to know that uh, I have a son that uh, is studying material science engineering. And nowadays he's in Grenoble at the Polytech uh, at Grenoble in France, studying for his uh, bachelor's um, degree on, on material science engineering. And um, well, if I have a chance to go to France next year, maybe I could, uh, I could visit Besançon and uh, meet you in person, Professor Chevalier. It's, it's gonna be a real pleasure. Yeah, it would be a pleasure. Um, Do not hesitate. Thank you so, thank you so much. I will, I will, I will contact you uh, for sure. Samuel and Lucas, Lucas, congratulations, okay. congratulations on on your fine work. I have been following following your work for for some time, and 
Um, I've, I've seen that you have really have good results here. I really encourage you to pursue um, or to continue working on this topic. It's very nice. It's very Thank interesting. You. And also, I'd like to congratulate Samuel for advising you and for all the care that you guys had on, on doing the work. Uh, I do have uh, a very minor number of uh, small corrections, but uh, I, did, I did them on a piece of paper and a pencil in the old-fashioned way. And I will produce a, um, a PDF with uh, some uh, very minor suggestions for correcting, correcting the test. And I, okay. will for, I will, yes, I will forward it to you or to Samuel or both. But more or less, like in the same way I did for Lucas Zanovello, uh, Samuel. Uh, but it's, it's uh, I, again, it's a very reduced number of corrections that, or suggestions that I would have for your, your text, your, your manuscript. Um, in terms of questions, I just would like to point out a couple of remarks. Uh, they're not specifically questions because some of them Professor Chevalier has already um, addressed it and I'm, uh, I'm fine with the answers, I'm satisfied. But one of them uh, goes back to the manuscript on page number 18. Um, I'm looking at your manuscript here where on page 18 you have used um, in, in order in order to validate your your analytical model for your experimental data you have used um, the frf model stated on equation 21 that is okay. essentially is essentially is, it uses the viscose uh type of, of damping it makes yeah. makes a lot of sense because your time domain duffing model also uses that uh, damping uh model but I'd like to suggest to you, if you have a chance to process your data, again, your experimental data, try to use the hysteretic or the structural type of uh, damping model for the equation number 21. Uh, okay. I don't know if you have a chance to do that. Did you have a chance to work on that? No, I have not tested it, but it's a good suggestion. Yeah. I try. Yeah, because, you know, uh, the, the structural damping model, uh, uh, behaves a little bit better when you do do your curve fitting for your modal uh, extraction, despite the fact that uh, you're just using one mode or the fundamental mode. But uh, I would still uh, suggest you to try to use the structural um, t um, damping model in your in your uh, uh, modal modal extraction. Okay. Okay, I will okay. do that. Thank you very much. Yeah, and I have another remark that I'd like to point with you on page. Uh, let me see here. On page 21. Okay, here. Yeah, right on the bottom. Uh, it's not. It's not on the on the manuscript. It's on the. Uh, it's not on the presentation. It's on the manuscript. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. you you have the manuscript there. Okay. Yeah. Right at the bottom of page 21. Here. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit further, please. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Uh, you, you, you mentioned that uh, you have used it for the linear identification, the white noise excitation signal. That's a good choice. However, if you do have a chance to go back to the lab, I would strongly suggest you to do this linear identification, uh, also using the sign, the sign swept type of excitation. The white noise uh, excitation is very good, but since it's a broadband type of excitation, it tends, because of the Fourier transforms, it tends to linearize all the nonlinear behavior that you might have in, on, your, on your system. So uh, even using a very low level of voltage, like you, you, say, you say you use like a 0.05 volts, uh, still the random might uh, hide some of the nonlinear behavior that would appear uh, uh, if you were using the sign sweep uh, type of excitation. So the suggestion is if you do have a chance to go back to the lab, try to reproduce this, this, um, this uh, test using, instead of white noise, the sign swept, okay? Okay, Professor, uh, I can be wrong, but the idea here on using the random is it's that to consider all the linear effects and then to separately 
deal separately with the nonlinear effect only on the nonlinear identification step. But yeah, I, I tried to use this web sign on the linear identification, but even in low expectation level, it has a lot of nonlinear behavior, and I think it's not appropriate for it. But if you have some comments in it, I would okay. No. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I understand perfectly. The reason that uh, you chose the, the 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 white noise, it's for for also it's for the uh, identification of the linear part. That that was clear to me. But okay. uh, even with a, a very low level of excitation, you you might you might have some nonlinear effects coming if you change to sign sweep. And you in this case, you would have to excite your system with a even lower excitation level. Understand my point? Yes, use the swept sign, but uh, decrease this excitation level to less than I use it on the my maybe. Sign. Maybe, maybe, okay. yes. It's just uh, some some uh, uh, curiosity that came to my mind when I read your, your material, okay? Okay, okay. I can do that when I can go back to the laboratory. But of course, I do. of course. I do. And uh, the final sentence that uh, starts with uh, the white noise and then you go to, to the next page, I, I have a suggestion for you there. Okay. Uh, where, right where? On, on the top, yeah. Okay. Yeah. When you say that the white noise input is used here because it's less energetic, uh, I would suggest you to, to change that sentence to something like uh, the white noise excitation signal is a broadband, which means that it tends to put the same level of energy in each spectral line, not necessarily uh, low energetic. You can have a, a, a white noise extremely energetic uh, yeah, to your yeah. system. So I, instead of saying that uh, it's less energetic, I would say that uh, the white noise input is used is, is used here because it's a broadband type of excitation and excites evenly all these spectral lines in the frequency range of interest or something like this. That's what I would uh, I would be I will be writing on on the suggestion that I I would be uh, uh, sending to you guys. Okay, but it's just a, a recommend, recommendation. Okay. And my, okay. fi my final um, remark goes back to your slide 29. I believe that uh, Professor Chevalier has uh, already asked um, as well the, the, the same type of uh, question that I had. Yeah, here we go. Uh, the plot on the right side, um, uh, I think that uh, uh, addressing or complementing the, the question that Professor Chevalier presented to you, uh, I think it's a, it's a lack of experimental data because you just have one set of experimental data for do, yes. doing this uncertainty analysis, right? Yes. Okay, once again, uh, when you have a chance to go back to the lab, try to run a few more experiments and try to have a experimental uh, database a little bit more robust so you can have like a better comparison with your Monte Carlo uh, simulations. That's my recommendation. Yes, yes. It's a future work that I, I expect to do, and I am curious to, to see if my model is able to capture the real uh, behavior of the experimental data, and I want to do that, so. Yeah, I did that for, uh, for another application, like a, an, an L-beam L, L type of uh, energy harvester. I did a lot of testing during this pandemic, uh, we had nothing else to do. What the heck? Let's just run some experiments. I set up yeah. a, a my, my mini laboratory on my basement in my home, and uh, I, I ran hundreds of tests. And it's amazing how experimental data changes every time you run the same test. So you have mm -hmm. a unique opportunity to contribute from the experimental side, like uh, since the Bayesian uh, type of uh, of approach incorporates the experimental, uh, which is very nice, by the way. But uh, if you have, when you have a chance, go back to the lab and run a few more tests, okay? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, and, and uh, look, I think that's, that's most of what I'd like to point out with you. Uh, and as I, as I said, uh, the, some minor corrections on the text, I will be sending to you by a PDF. And okay. I thank you again, congratulations. Your work is very nice. Your presentation was very good as well. I see that you dominate what you're doing, which means that uh, 
uh, you have had a very good education under Samuel. Congratulations to you as well, Samuel. And by the way, I will not uh, lose the opportunity to say that uh, you have sent me a couple of emails uh, a few days ago. I had a very rough week, but I'm going to be answering your emails uh, by this weekend, okay? I'm sorry for not okay. replying to you as well uh, until now. Thank you so much, Samuel. Okay, thank you again. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure for us. Uh, now I'm open for a short uh, comment about Rafael Teloli. Because Rafael Tenoli is my PhD student who works with you, me and Professor Mel Chevalier and has a great support to work of Lucas Miguel during this uh, uh, project. So I'm hoping for uh, Rafael. Uh, so, uh, firstly, uh, I would like to, to congratulate you, Lucas. You did a very nice uh, work. Uh, we you. started this work in 2015, 2016, and it's it's very nice to see how you how you you advanced well with what you are doing. Uh, about the results, uh, yes, I think that you you could perform more experiments. I have a lot of new experiments here with me, maybe you, you could try your identification method with the, the, the data that I acquired during my, my research internship at Besançon. And, yeah, <laughs> but yes, I think that the, this is all. Uh, uh, I would like also to, to thank uh, Professor Paul and Professor Bell uh, because it, it was very nice also to me to, to, to listen your comments and so this is all for now and congratulations again lucas thank you rafael okay thank you rafael your comments uh so now some uh, some words for for my my way so uh for me uh lucas it's a great student it's very motivated uh, i am sure that lucas will contribute to the Brazilian gender community uh, in, during his career. Uh, in most important, uh, he can help us develop this area and to try to transfer this type of technology to our national companies, to our industries, because I think this is necessary for our development here in Brazil. Yeah. Uh, I think he's excellent for mentoring this scientific initiation uh, because we can get a look together when we start working uh, and I appreciate you so much guiding this work because we investigate different about the joints point thinking structural health monitor is a future goal now we await the result of a PASP about the fellowship that you ask it to get a doctorate to keep on studying these points uh, now we were I'm waiting this this result. Uh, I think uh, maybe this month or next month. And we are waiting today in Friday, you know. But <laughs> for now, no 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 results. But uh, yeah. I, I think you can get this scholarship to keep on the doctorate a scholarship. Probably Gael, I think uh, Lucas will visit you at uh, Besançon to work with to start work to to keep on working with Rafael and sure about this. Uh, so now I am finished the, the streaming. Okay. Uh, like this.